Hi, welcome back to Mind Control. Bang on the door. I'm the oldest there screaming, so I go answer the door. And I answer the door, and standing there is this giant man. It was this little boy. And he's holding this huge box of food. And beside him on the ground was a black pot with an uncooked turkey in it. And he said, is your father home? And I said, just one moment. <laughs> I was like, this is a gift from God. This is going to change it all. This can make my mom and dad happy. It's going to be unbelievable. So I go, my father is screaming at my mother through a closed door to the bedroom door. And I said, Dad, Dad, there's a guy at the door. And he goes, go, you answer the door. I said, I did. He's got to see you. I, I kind of teased the door. I said, Dad, you got to come. So he said, fine. He made one last yell at her, and he walks in the door. And I'm waiting there, just can't wait to see his face. And my dad opens the door, and this man's standing there with this big box of food. And my father did not get happy. He looked at this man, and he raised his voice to him, and he said, look, we don't take charity. And then he took the door to slam it in the man's face. But the man was a good-sized man. He put his foot there and smacked his foot and bounced back over. He said, sir, sir, this is not charity. Everybody has a tough time. Somebody knows you're having a tough time. And they want you to have a magical Thanksgiving. I'm just the delivery guy. He said, please take this. And my father said, we don't take charity. He went to slam it again. And this time the guy put his shoulder against it so he couldn't do it. And then my father's staring at him. It's like these two males starting to get in this intense mode. And one just trying to give a gift. And I'm freaking. And then the guy said something that I'll never forget and in moments I wish he hadn't said, but he found a way to force my father. He's holding this thing and he looked at me and then he looked at my dad and he said, don't make your family suffer because of your ego. Now my dad's level of energy increased, but he was also trapped. You get it? So he took the food, slammed it on our table and slammed the door in the man's face and never even thanked him. And then I thought, you know, years I figured out, our whole life is shaped by decisions. That's what we've talked about today, right? But there's three decisions you're making every moment you're alive. And the way you make these three decisions shapes your destiny. First decision we're all making every moment is what are you going to focus on? What are you going to focus on? I realized that my father's life and my life ended up very different because we made that day three decisions very differently. He decided to focus on the fact that he has not fed his family. And the second question you got to decide Every moment you're alive, including this moment, what are you going to focus on? Second question is, as you're focusing on, what does this mean? What does it mean? And the bottom line on meaning is, if you think about it, you get to make up the meaning, and most people pick the worst one, don't they? That day, my father decided to focus on that he hadn't fed his family, and I know what meaning he gave because he said it out loud over and over again, that he was worthless because he had not taken care of his family. And then the final, most important decision you make every moment you're alive, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I'll tell you what he decided to do. He decided to leave our family shortly thereafter, which at the time was, it was the worst experience of my life. It was the most crushing experience I felt. I realized in that moment that the worst day of my life, my father leaving, had actually been the best day of my life. Because if I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't be here today. And now because of that, I'm get to live this life and I have the desire and the drive and the, the want to give it this way. Life is going smoothly, then the bottom falls out. Everything is coming up roses, then the bottom falls out. That life starts going your way finally, then the bottom falls out. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. You worked on a job 35 years and now you're laid off. You plan for life to work a certain way and then the bottom falls out. You're looking for this, and God sends that. That even though you love God, does not mean that the bottom will not fall out. You might be going through a season, since darkness is the absence of a thing. You might be going through a season of the absence of a thing that you legitimately need, but it ain't over. You, you have to be, you have to be awfully immature to think that every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than other days. And some days, if it ain't one thing, it's another. One of the things that we know about life 
is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. You may have to function for a while without the absence of the thing you adore. But it's not over. It's just that God has created the treasures of darkness. And in order to create the treasures of darkness, he has to take away light so that he can incubate what he's about to do in your life. And I'm going to tell you right now, it won't be easy. It will be hard because life is hard. That's what life is. And these challenges, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them. Stand up. Dig in. In the end, we are only as strong as the adversity that we overcome. The pain of the adversity will eventually subside, but the lesson will always remain. And that lesson will strengthen you to endure your next battle, this time stronger and wiser than before. Line up those problems and confront them, face them. Do not let them bring you down. In fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. The way you handle your good years will determine if you survive the bad years. In other words, you must learn to maximize the positive. If you don't learn how to maximize the good times and minimize the bad times, then you won't make it through the family. Victory begins in the dark. And we all go through these times where we don't think it's going to work out. Seasons where nothing is changing. We're being our best, but the business is not growing. The fact is, light is on the way. What God promised you is in route. You've been believing for things to change in your marriage, your finances, with an addiction. It seems permanent. You've already entered a new day. You've already passed midnight. You can't see it yet, but victory is on the way. Life and business is like the changing seasons. You cannot change the seasons. That's impossible. You can't rearrange the seasons. The seasons are going to come however they're going to come. You cannot change that. So you cannot change the seasons, but make this note, you can change yourself. That was the message I got when I was 25 years old with someone who took the time to teach me. You can change yourself. Now, instead of complaining about the dark, have a new perspective. The dark means the sun is on the way up. The promise is about to come forth. Who can stop the sun from rising each morning? Who can keep light from breaking forth over the horizon? All the forces of darkness cannot stop what God has ordained for you. They cannot keep what he promised from coming to pass. In the face of that darkness, when you don't see any light, get in agreement with God. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid. Anybody could be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself or a woman. Adversity is a gift. Embrace it. Trying to avoid adversity would be like trying to avoid the tide while swimming in the ocean. But like the ocean, if you can learn to embrace the tide of adversity, 
you will eventually learn to let it lift you up and you can ride the wave to shore unscathed and in that moment take a look around because the view that you have after you've overcome your adversity is absolutely breathtaking thank you so much for watching till the end don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section please also like subscribe and share this video with your friends and families hi welcome back to mind control on a mental level what self-awareness knowing what type of people i like to be with knowing who helps me grow and who drains me yeah. that's mental self-awareness so self-awareness at every level and then we go into the spiritual consciousness level that's disconnecting from all these identities and understanding the identity that we are wired for generosity and we're wired to serve and only in service can we be happy and that's us on a consciousness level that's the identity of consciousness like water is wet the sun is heating in light consciousness is service mm. like that's how it fits why are we wired for that we're wired for that because all of us as consciousness have been designed and we see it since like even kids like i was i was giving this example of this beautiful and you may have seen it it is it went viral on instagram it was this little girl probably about 2 years old watching a cartoon and she takes a handkerchief and the cartoon character is crying and she goes up to the television and she tries to wipe it up right and it's 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 incredible because this girl's 2 years old and she thinks this cartoon character animals crying and she gets a real tissue and tries to wipe it on the TV obviously it doesn't work and there's another another one that I saw with this statue of this rabbit and there's like four rabbits and one rabbit's like falling off the end uh -huh. and this little boy is trying to push the rabbit up but it's a stone rabbit it's just a statue but he's trying to help it back up so we see and there was a great article in wired about this about how we're wired for generosity our, our brain is happier in service this whole world is almost a school an education system to make us realize that one truth and we see that when we're serving when we're doing that we feel genuine happiness when we're trying to gain and greed and power and strength we, we even feel empty as it slips through our fingers so the why is because that allows us to connect to our deepest self the happiest self that we have and modern studies have shown that so michael norton at cambridge university he did a study where they gave people 5 10 20 dollars to spend on themselves have you seen this Go ahead, though, yeah. yeah, and then they spent five, ten, twenty dollars on others. So people spent five, ten, twenty dollars on makeup, Starbucks, and the normal stuff. <laughs> right, right, right? right. That was the that was the three common three makeup, Starbucks, and then something else. I can't remember. And then people who spent on other people, they also bought other the same stuff. Starbucks was still in there, yeah. and they're buying all this stuff. What they found is that when people self-assess their happiness before and after, without knowing about this A/B test, people who spend the money on themselves. didn't feel any happier or any less happier but the people that spent on others felt 10 to 20% happier mm. and then he went and tried this out this was a college in in the united states that then when it did in africa they did it all over the world and the stats and the pattern showed the same wow that we're wired for generosity we're wired to serve to make us realize that that's our real nature that's our greatest self awareness you could be rich man but you cannot erase the work ethic part there is no getting around ain't no elevator to the top you got to take the stairs the elevator don't go to the top man not in the world of success you got to take the stairs y'all got to start getting gritty man somebody taught this to me a long time ago he said steve in order to get to the life of your dreams you're going to have to learn how to get comfortable being uncomfortable When you hear people say all the time, I don't want to do nothing that I'm not comfortable with, this person's in trouble. Because whatever your comfort zone is, if you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you'll fail. If your comfort zone is this big and you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you'll fail. In order to succeed in life, you have to step outside of your comfort zone. But I want to tell you something about yourself. All of you are equipped to live outside of your comfort zone. 
See, a lot of people are afraid to jump. A lot of people are afraid to take chances. A lot of people are afraid to put things up for risk. And you shouldn't be. Now, you can be afraid, but you should learn how to go ahead anyhow. See, because let me show you something about yourself. For all the bad days you've ever had, for every day that you thought you wasn't gonna get through, for every period in your life, you did not see no way you could come out on the other side. Your track record for surviving them bad days is 100%. You have survived every single one of them. Your track record for surviving bad days, y'all, is 100%. And that's pretty good. You can't name one bad day you ain't got through. I have a life of convenience now. But in order to get the life of convenience, you got to have a very uncomfortable life. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Stop trying to do everything the short way. Stop trying to figure out the easy way. You got to get, you got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You got to get told no. You going to ask somebody for some money. He going to tell you no. But show me something that has grown into something beautiful that didn't have no dirt on it. You take a seed and throw it on the concrete. Don't put no dirt on it and watch what happens. See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. Because dirt ain't just dirt. Dirt is fertilizer. Dirt is nutrients. Dirt gives you the strength for your seed to push through. See, you got to have dirt on you to push through something. Everything you see that's beautiful starts out as a seed. But that seed got to get dirt on it. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because... You get thrown off course. You get mad because you get a detour. That's just dirt. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You get mad because you lost your mama. That's dirt. I want you to think about all them bad moments you had that looked like you weren't going to make it. And then I want you to ask yourself, well, why did I make it? Just change your mindset. If you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again. Everybody in your life will have a turn back moment. No matter who you are, you're going to have such a period in your life where it seems like it's not working. You're going to have doubts. You're going to have a lot of trials and tribulations and challenges. And everybody has what's called a turn back moment. You always have a moment in your life where the direction you're going, you will have to make a decision to keep going or you turn back. The sad thing is the average person turns back. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. For if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. It's some really, really wonderful ordinary people. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. There's no other way. I'm sorry. Everybody can be the best you're capable of being. And I want to tell you, if you want to fail, you have the right to fail. That's what's great about this country. You do not have the right to cause other people to fail because you don't do everything best your ability. When you join a spouse, you bring a child in the world, you join a business, you join a team, you have obligation responsibilities and you owe it to other people to do the maximum you can at each and everything you do. It's not complicated. When you become 18, Nobody tells you that it's now going to be your job to parent yourself. And by parent yourself, I mean it's your job to make yourself do the crap you don't want to do so you can be everything that you're supposed to be. 
and you're so damn busy waiting to feel like it. You got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You got to get told no. You're going to ask somebody for some money. He's going to tell you no. But at least then, when I see somebody trying and I tell them no, I try to at least give them something else. See, I'm not going to hand you a fish saying, I'll teach you how to fish. The life's a matter of making choices, wherever you are, good or bad, because of the choices you make. Don't blame anybody else, but if you get an education, you're willing to work and overcome problems and difficulties, in this great country, you can amount to something. The average person blows all of their 20s. Then when you find out that life ain't waiting on you, now you're 30. Now guess what happens to most of all of us, including myself? I spent all of my 30s trying to do the things that I should have been doing in my 20s. So now my life is behind. Now I look up and you fought it. You and your fought it. And now you're trying to do the things and have the things that you could have had in your 30s, man. And if I could tell anybody, man, if I could do it again, I would have changed the way I lived my 20s. And if I was in my 30s, you really in your 30s, it's time out for clubs and drinking and happy hours and parties. In your 30s, you should just be about the business of your life. I'm telling you, man, I did so many things wrong. I made so many mistakes. Homeless, living in a car. I made incredible mistakes. I could have avoided a lot of it. Now, it created who I am. Now, once you've made the mistakes, just get up, man. Quit, don't wallow in them, because you can recover from all mistakes. It's happened to you in life that you can never, ever anticipate. And many times when those things happen, you want to give up. You have to decide if you are willing to do the things to put you in that category. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in LA and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. They already making decisions about your life and your ass will sleep. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they said. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are gonna be around your bed when your time comes? Look about that, really. Why are you where you are in your life? The choices that you have made have been because of what you believe to be true for yourself. If you do what most do, which is put in the effort for a small amount of time and then quit as soon as things don't work in your favor, you'll never get the rewards. If you're only in it for you, if all you care about is what you get out of it, the results won't come. People buy from those who are genuine, genuinely adding value. Those who offer something that makes other people's lives easier. Those who offer something that makes other people's lives better. Be the person who adds that kind of value. Don't choose anything that will jeopardize your soul. Prioritize who you are, who you want to be, and don't spend time with anything that antagonizes your character. All right, life is not a popularity contest. Be brave, take the hill, but first answer that question, what's my hill? Your successes and the reciprocity of gratitude.
We so often focus on failure, don't we? We study failure, obsess with failure, we dissect failure and our failures. We dissect them so much we end up intoxicated with them to the point of disillusion. And when do we write in our diary, usually, when we're depressed? What do we gossip about? Other people's flaws and limitations? We can dissect ourselves into self-loathing if we're not careful. I find that most of the times our obsession with what is wrong just ends up breeding more wrong, more failure. You got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. You got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your, your, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. What are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors. Some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists. Some of you have money. Some of you have patience. Some of you have kindness. Some of you have love. Some of you have the gift of long suffering. Whatever it is, whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? Times. It's the best way to figure out where you're going. Life will never be a straight path. You just genuinely care about people because everybody you're going to meet the rest of your life needs a smile, needs a kind word, needs a person. You see, when you do the right thing, people are always going to be able to trust you. My wife and I have been married because we can trust each other. I never lose the trust. The only way people are ever going to trust you if you do the right thing. That's all God wants us to do. Do the right thing. Do everything best your ability, because then people will know you're committed to excellence. You want to be special. Not to say, hey, here I am, but help other people and caring about people. Hi, welcome back to Mind Control, where we inspire and motivate you. Hope you enjoy the video. Purpose. What's your purpose? Why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing all the hard stuff? Why do you get up every day and look for motivation? Now, I don't know what yours is, but I know mine. You know, I, I hear people say, oh, you got the fancy car and you got the, the jet and you got the wife and you got the kids and you got the life and you get to travel and speak. None of those things, because we all know the people that have the this, this six or seven or eight or 12 or 20 cars. I was looking at this house the other day, it's got a 20 car garage. And I'm like, dude, what, why would you need a 20 car garage? Certainly I get it, I get it that somebody's got so much money and so much wealth that they just have to continue to buy stuff or they got three or four or five homes or two or three jets or whatever the deal is, right? But the reality is that doesn't fill me up. You know, what's always filled me up, even when I was, and I got the fancy stuff. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, bouncing on the, 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 the fancy stuff. I like nice things too, like anybody. But when is enough enough, right? When do you have too many nice things and find out the well is empty? You, the vessel. And for me, like, I want to help people. I've always wanted to help people. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to help people, particularly after my dad died, because I wanted people to help me. And maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe it comes from some, some wound, some early, maybe not a wound. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was always there and, and, and the loss of my dad and realizing that I needed uncles to fill in the spot, the mentorship and the almost like a life scholarship a coach. I needed a coach. I needed attention in school and I didn't get it. Um, maybe that's what like spurred this that I'm going to help people. 
You know, I talk about being other people's uncle. People call me Uncle G. Literally, I don't care if you have any money or not. Okay, I already got mine. My money's so right, and I'm and I'm so I'm, I'm grateful that my money's right. I want to help other people get their money right. I talk about money a lot because, you know, if the school system that I went to, all the way through college, an accounting degree, there was never a discussion about money. And for me, I'm trying to fill the gaps in between your education from your parents and oh, that guy's upset. Miseducation, whether it be a church or school or home, don't talk about money. You don't need money. Money won't make you happy. Money is the root of all evil. All these things that we've been taught. Um, I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I talk to you about money every day because nobody told you the truth about money. Do you need money? You don't need money to buy sparkles in the roof. That's just dumb. It's beautiful. It's nice. But how many you need? How many do you really need? You know, and this is this is what me and my wife talk about all the time. Okay, what is our purpose? And my purpose is to help people. My goal is to wake people up. I got a very strong message. It, it, it agitates some people. I know I got a style that, uh, that 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 doesn't accommodate doesn't accommodate everyone. But I'm trying to break through all the noise. You know, you got a lot of noise in the world. Got a lot of garbage in the world. Most of it is just putting people to sleep. So when you hear me yelling, showing off, dude, I'm just trying to get your attention. My purpose is to wake you up, okay? I want to help you. I want to help as many people as I can. I'm getting ready to go into a sales meeting right now. There's going to be 75 people in this meeting. This is my office. This is my group. We have another 150 people in the field of my real estate company. For too many years, I stayed small. I stayed little. I needed somebody screaming at me. I needed somebody to tell me the truth, like, blow up, dude. You got to blow up. But you need a purpose to do that, okay? My purpose is to help people. I want to go down, not for the money that I made or the books that I wrote, but the people I helped. And I want you to be one of them, okay? My purpose is to wake you up, to give you the truth, to keep you on the path. If you're in India right now, you're in South America, you're in China, you're in Hawaii, I don't care where you live, your race, your color, your religion, I will help you. Okay, I will help you. I don't need your money. I need your willingness to change your life. That fills me up more than any amount of money, fills me up more than a plane, fills me up more than a car. I want to be responsible for more than just myself, my wife, and my kids, and my 75 employees here, my 150 out on the road in the real estate. I want to do more than just something for myself. I want to help others. So if you're one of those people and I can help you, let me know how in comments. How can I help you? What program do you need? Do you need something on sales, marketing, social media? Do you need a bigger network? Do you need some help in money? I got plenty of programs. I'll give it to you if I need to, okay? God bless, be great. Everything, everything that matters in life must be built. Woo! Let me tell you, that was worth the whole trip. If it's a business, it's got to be built. If it's a family, it's got to be built. If it's a marriage, it's got to be built. If it's a relationship, it's got to be built. You will not have success waiting on these microwave relationships. Everything in life, build. You have walked away from things saying they weren't finished, they weren't supposed to be. You left people and said they weren't ready, they weren't supposed to be. You have to build a boy into a man. You have to build a wedding into a marriage. You have to build a house into a home. Build it! You know, we live in a world where opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. There's the pull to do good and the pull to do evil, to do what's right, and the pull to cross the line. That bit of warfare goes on even in our own head, our own consciousness. When I was a little kid growing up, I remember this cartoon of a little boy, and it showed this little boy with a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other shoulder. The little devil said to the little boy, go ahead and do it, it'll be okay. It'll be fine, go ahead, go ahead. And the little angel saying, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. The little devil said, yes, go ahead. 
little angel voice. No, no. And I guess that's part of our life experience. It's part of the adventure. The old prophet said, love good and hate evil. And if we become educated in that way, knowing when the voice of temptation is not the right road to take, we make some better choices. When I got up this morning, a little voice said, you really don't have to do your exercises today. You could skip today. You've got some work to do. And I got in at about one o'clock this morning on my airline flight from Colorado Springs. But as recently as this morning, the little voice said, you don't have to do them this morning. But I well know that if I postpone a day, sure enough, I've got to make up for it somewhere. Maybe do a modified version if I don't have quite enough time, but don't let it just go. But we all have that. You know, that's fairly constant, what voice to listen to. I guess part of the answer here is not to become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief on the street that's after your purse but also beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise. The little thief in your head that says, you're too tall, you're too short. You've never done it before. It's not gonna happen for you. Others can find this book, you can't find it. If you found it, you probably wouldn't read it. If you read it, you probably wouldn't understand it. This is a constant bit of warfare going on inside of our head. So we all have to deal with that. But what I call that in these experiences is the great adventure. It seems as though God has designed human life and his own existence as a bit of adventure. First creating all the angels according to the storyteller. And we might surmise, what was that for? Maybe he didn't want to be alone or maybe he wanted to create some kind of adventure for himself. Made one of the angels, the storyteller says, the most famous, the most beautiful, the leader. And finally, Lucifer gathers up a third of the angels, makes a move on God's throne, loses, giving us a bit of insight, not much detail. I guess most of it's left to our imagination, which is probably what the storyteller wanted to create. Here's a few details and leave the rest to your imagination. So it seems like in the beginning, before the beginning, God, it seems, was interested in adventure. But I guess... If you boil it down to something very simple, it says, would it be possible to win if you couldn't lose? And almost everybody says, well, no, it doesn't seem possible that you could win if you couldn't lose. So there has to be an adventure in order to have a victory, in order to have a win, in order to overcome, in order to create something of value. You must keep pulling positively against the negative forces, but that's what creates the adventure. If you took a football today and walked out to the football stadium, put it under your arm and crossed the goal line, would we all cheer and call it a touchdown? And the answer is no. It's not a touchdown until you face the 300 pounders who want to smash your face in the turf. And if you can muscle by them, dance by the secondary, cross the goal line with the football under your arm, now we call it a touchdown, maybe a championship. But not without the conflict. But that's a good phrase. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And on any given day or occasion, that conflict can occur. There's an interesting Bible story that says there were two nice people, according to the storyteller, and it says, however, it's an interesting word, and that's where the adventure begins. However, one built his house on the rock and the other built his house on the sand. Nice people can make foolish decisions about the future and then suffer the consequences, especially when the storm comes. So the key is to try your best so many questions are not a matter of morality. It's a question of being careless or careful, being cautious rather than reckless, but not too cautious. So it's kind of an interesting challenge. If you were so cautious driving on a two-way highway, every time a car came your way, you were troubled about thinking whether or not he was going to stay on his side of the line, that you pulled off the road, wait for him to pass, then got back on the road and continued your journey. We would call that a bit too cautious. It may take you two, three days to get to your destination. So you say somehow when the traffic's coming your way on a two-way highway, you must trust at least the law of averages that says, I have a pretty good chance of arriving, even though there's not a guarantee that one out of a thousand coming my way, I'll cross the line and it'll be the end. So we do have to be cautious, but not too cautious and let those daily experiences lead us into a better life.
a better month, a better year. I arrived on an airplane flight once and the flight attendant came on and said, ladies and gentlemen, you have now completed the safest part of your journey. From now on, it gets dangerous. Fasten your seatbelt. I thought that was interesting. You've now completed the safest part of your journey, according to statistics. For the miles covered, it's the safest way to go. We like to thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again.